Ali wish angejibaia zile makapsuli uongeza libido. Huo ni wakati awino alimkunja kaka kipino. Akimfinya na full force ya kisigino baada ya kujipiga jeki na pilo. Mshia ku confident na hii alikuwa hajakomaa kucheza mchezo kai hizo lakini kijana <laughs> alikataa kuwa mguu na mishowe akamwambia Ladies and gentlemen, Kolo Malaika nakupenda malaika Kuna na time ni lazima tu tunawe atakao tunaenda kumanga na kijiko Lakini ni masikitiko kijana kuona uzito wa wisdom kwa punchline kaa hizo Madam kumwambia Kama mkolikizi si tunaweza enda maringo uone pale miuji ficha indo Kijana alikubali bila ku consider eti happy ya kiuno uacha viungo na vitisho Aliamua kuwa mzigo juu ya ule akuwa nasikia uzito. Kijana alikataa kuwa mguu na mishowe akamangwa na mchanga. Enyewe happy sipo kunywa kwa kipimo. Huwa ni rahisi mno raia afe kwenye pinhole. Ah oh, Lord of mercy. Camera digital, phone kali which can download my free phone just like any other iPhone. Wao madam alimbaia kumlua into the mission na ni ukweli alijitupa ndani ya Killzone bila ku consider the reason behind death ya mamillion. Oika na kupenda malaika. Yeah. Malaika na kupenda malaika. Waambia mimi fanyeje kidana wenzio yeah na kupenda sana najua ni wewe ndiye mwangu wa moyo kwa nini unanisumbua roho ndani ya moyo sina amani Ino ni freestyle na ona munyelewe From Mombasani adi Nairobini Mwanipata majamani Wapinduru ya Mombasani Wapinduru ya Kenya Wapinduru ya Creative Yeah, aste aste Yani taratibu Angaleo siji kungwa Manake indio style ya Indio style ya Siogope Wende hapa Hey Kana penda hangs team sana Chunga ni mba sana Reduce kidogo Kana penda skati na masana Utacho make a brazo Reduce kidogo Hacha kupenda noti dada sana Utapoteza maisha Ndiyo Ndiyo Alright Check this out all the way from Kisumu The storyteller Come on there The storyteller Come on Fanya raka fanya raka time in a pita Oh 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 Is he alone? Are you in the building? Bushi Jojo Kidogo They say you will never know the importance of your buttocks until there is a boil on them. They also say that if you sleep with dirty buttocks, don't be surprised to wake up with smelling fingers. For man cannot discover new oceans unless he has courage to lose sight of the shore. And indeed, if your mother-in-law has bad sitting habits, you must learn good looking habits. Thank you. It's your honor, Daniel Nyumba, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for Bushi. Pretty upper. 
bado natamani nikuona siku moja hasilipo kwenda sipojui bado natamani nikuaze kwa dakika ei all the way from Meru, ladies and gentlemen, Nasizo. Karibu Nasizo. Ha 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 ha. Me wang na tamani sana kukona wewe kimwa usiku mchana na la kuchasa zika na. Subira yangu ni kuita we mama mo yangu ni kuita mwana. Iku vile kemeru kau ne wazazi kimwa na. Takununuli ya kagari Pesa pia mtakupa mama Takuita mimi mwari Hata ulipo kuenda na waza Nikona bushi toka isiolo Merumba moja isiolo Tunapiga penta Tunachanganya, tunakanganya Watana shati Ndo haba ya town Na tesa tunafika kufika sana Thank you so much, I love you more Wapi Dagoretti, Lelowski wapi All the way from Eldoret, Dinoski Eldoret mkwa wapi LD, Dani ya nyumba Bwana sifiu, eh? Wangapi wanapenda wrestling? Ok, John Cena alishinda The Rock but you let the rock when you mean I'm Jua, I'll be okay with seeing us. Skiza, eh? Skiza, usiji tharao, mina President Kenyatta tukona one thing in common. President Kenyatta kona escort. Ata mini likunyo chai ya subu ina escort. Okay, Murembo, kuja tuende one night stand. Yani tuende Kesha, to spend the whole night standing to Kikesha. Aya, tukwa na mzee wa kazi. Mzee, wazee pia wako na nyanyumba. Mzee, ebu wanza kutupigia, tukupigia karumu. Unda ka, ka, ka nini kidogo? Ka twist. Tuende. Ka chenge, 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 chenge. Ok, ok, ok. Wacha taanza mimi, diyo mfuwate. Tukufuwate. Lakini ni wasarimi hamjambo. Bwana asiviwe. Sionona hii kara ya wakamba. Kabisa. Eh, wakamba hiko ndani ya house. Hako ndani ya house. Aya, kwa naka wimbo, nataka kuwimba tu Ya ngospo Nafikiri ni nani ya naipenda sana Halisema hako na share Kwa hiyo wimbo, kwa YouTube Skiza Inaitua Nilim lili ya mungu Kwa uzu ni sana Baba Nisikie Mikono yangu juu kwa maombi Ndiyo moyo wangu pate tulia Mungu ulie mkuu mungu Mungu baba Abraham Jacobo Isaka Ndaudi Na wale wengine manambi wa zamani Kama ndaudi naomba ushindi Moyo wangu tulie Mungu ulie Ladies and gentlemen, remix all the way from Machakos, Papa V, Tony Kazi Baba Abraham it all started with the word, God created the world. What was the God? If the word itself was God, out was formless, empty, covered by darkness, and the spirit of God was sobering over the water sin, omnipotent Jesus, and let there be light, and there was light, so bright, so there was day and night, and in the sky, high, 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 high,
I've been looking for fame. Be trying to make it in the game. I put all the matters to shame. Today I'm shining. Things are no longer the same. And this is a spell in my name. Papa Vin, you heard about me wrong with CD. Be my CD. Made a nigga by my series. Papa John, she does my nigga. Ka big in a jigger. Finger upon the trigger. Papa pa. And that's how we kill in the beast. Mili Pugo ka middle age. I rap in my tongue. I go and give no one guy. Rap for one guy. I'm in a big nigga. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving so fast and furious. Ka collab. I'm kissing. I'm calling G. I'm a runner. Chuck of rap. Kind of money. Poking in the beat. I'm bedo. Gajat tom. Kato beni poka win your right. Yeah, kalo no don't get any get soon. What I get each late got a chance to go out. Kitty man and the bed. Call me for figure dog man and jalo win your dolly one and the win your maler. May so. Papa vini, Papa vini, Papa vini. El sinja makawa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mi na taka ni 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 ju ya mani Kenya yo. La la. Yeah. Mo kaja yo to subir piga kura cha. Uh huh uh huh. Nataka sote tuwe na moja Yeah 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 Sure Haijalishi we ni mjaluwa Amani mukamba Haijalishi Mtaita kosti Sisi sote ni wa Kenya yo yo One try Haijalishi we ni mwope Sure Amamu si jama Nana Sisi wate Hey, you are Kenya. Ah, Simba. You are Kenya. So, so Simba. You are Kenya. So, so Simba. One nation. Listen, 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 Kidogo. Huh? Ninge uli zona mola na chota kami. Ninge sema nini? Jee jee. Unge ulizo na mola Unachota kawewe Unge sema nini Ninge ulizo na mola Unachota kami Ninge mwomba mani Tuwe na mani Peaceful Kenya Tuwe na umoja sote Unity Tuwe na upendo wa Kenya One love Tuwe na uguvu Kenya Pawa Alright We go All the way from Marsabi now Give me some love Woo Oh Na mini nitafika Na mini nitafika Ninapo enda Na mini nitafika Alright Na nitapata kile mola atanipa Na mini nitafika Na mini Na mini nitafika Alright Na mini nitafika Na nitapata kile mole ata nipa After kudop Out of school ni liya mwa ningie mta I thought it was easy babuda si kwenda fa Kuchim home Mada na nipesha saka kazi Na kusaka kazi kila mtana uliza kana ganji Jobs bimbo tena didn't have the dough it got so tough, so I had to let go. Yeah. But I once had a dream to let the relics down. I visited this friend so he can hold me down. Yeah. Down it got to Liandika, he's on my rhyme. Yeah. Performances we got, we be killing punchlines. Woo! Clubs, number shows, to Lifika Kazote. Uh huh. Babado Siku, Siku Pata Chote. Uh huh. Na, na, na fungwa new chapter. Fresh day kama yesterday's after Mebariki wana maneno ka pasta So here's a song for a broken soul V plus the main I've been thinking about the way Where's the change? Let my spirit soar like a bird off the cage I'm the melody in the morning as you turn the page Machines cry kila time niki express my rage Cause niko on my J-O-B niko biz hapa Kichwa ju ya maji Vaccine si papa but she does it The V rasta Head of the family putting God first on my hustle Na di redefine kama kadi ziki shuffle Niki anguka na amuka shake it off to the rise and the falls I kept my ears open when they told me I should take it easy Mind of a muscle is the game that we play Still I'm on the grind every day trying to hustle every way And I'm thankful for my life each day All day like a nun with a crucifix only things you wake hope in my Jesus peace. So. Trying to connect with my inner voice when Jesus speaks. Yeah. Online all day, hoping Jesus tweets, hoping Jesus keeps. Ladies and gentlemen, today we'd like to uh, meet, we're meeting to design 
the future of Kenya, Kenyan creative economy. For very many years, and I told people in Nairobi, and I've told you when I came around to the counties, the biggest issue in Mekua, ato kienda kutafta passport. Hawezi andika pale ati occupation, uandike ati am an acrobat. Unona hiyo hiwezi. Hawezi andika ati am a spoken word artist. You cannot write ati am a guitarist. You know, we always write businessman. Why? Because for very many years, our industry has not been respected. It's not been mainstreamed. I remember my dad could not explain what I do to his friends. So when guests come home, hajui atawambia mimi ufanya nini? Aseme ah kijana wangu sikuizi ah anaongeanga, analipwa kuongea. You know because in the African culture, MCs were not respected. MC alikuwa tu ule anko kimbele mbele, anaambiwa wewe tangaza matanga, tangaza party, tangaza harusi. Iko tu mtu kimbele mbele. Haikukua kitu ambacho unaweza sema ya kwamba I actually earn a living from this thing. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, what happened is uh, a group of people who are in this field got together and for the last few years have been trying to put together a creative economy policy. A way that government and other stakeholders can relate with you. Kama msani. Na yore imekuwa shida kubwa. But kiri tukuko karibu kufika, we have with them here, we'll be introducing them later on. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy Gaffo, get in the driver's seat. Oh, I'm in no hurry, would you take your time? I'd rather be a little leather than dead on time, yeah. Come on, Jimmy. That was Take it away. Five years ago. Oh. I can't even remember the rap one. It was years ago. Yeah. I can't even remember this rap. Well, ladies and gentlemen. That is Jimmy Gathu on that song. He can't even remember the words of the song. It was getting the driver's seat. You shot it in a matatu, okay? And I remember you used to say, I'm in a hurry, won't take your time. I'd rather be, be a little be late, late than dead on time. Yeah, you know, Kabuka. Awesome, give it up for Jimmy Gathu. So Jimmy, you have a history with this thing. A bit about that. Well, Ted, when Pelekambali, I can't even remember. I remember seeing you on Club Kiboka like 20 plus years ago. But e place on Ibamba. Upper Ndopale Nilizaliwa creatively. And now that Atiwatu wanasema kona career, we are sitting here because you want to talk about economic a creative economy. Sikuze to Mazia Kukona Kitukayo. Um uh, it was a by the way, come on any actor, ni vileanu menda kole, aukuchukulua kole, ni uliango kamtiani so Hule kijanango fanya vizuri. Oh, sasa na fani yeye ni actor tu. Unajua so, but now things are different. Um, uh, now you can hear local music. Sikuzetu mazeo kichiza muziki local unanikiwa memo. So, 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 so kwa industry, uh, you've seen the industry come all this time. What is the one thing that one, what is one advice unezapatia wale watu kwa industry? Advice to moja, the, what they can be Absolutely. able to use. And this is through experience. Um, Kwanza lazima ujue art yako. If you are a poet, kama weni michoraji, kama weni msani, you know, musician, singer, drama, whatever the case, you have first to know your art. Ujue kabisa, yani you can do it with your eyes closed. And then, lazima ugundu ya kwamba, kuna watu wanaitua managers, kuna watu wanaitua marketers. Hawezi fanya kila kitu. Most of us guys didn't do well in our music career because we wanted to be everything. Ukuwataka mkuwa musician, wendo na chukua simu ya kutafta job. Kuna watu wanaitua marketers, ambaye kazi yao ni kukuchukua talent yako na kukumarket. Hawajui kuimba, lakini anajua kukuchukua na kukumarket. So this is an industry. An industry is not one person. It's a group of people who make things happen, who create an industry. Pale kuna chapa ambaye nazunguka na unakuwa na kariya poa. But the most important thing, if you say you're an artist, you're an artist. If you say you're a marketer, 
wewe ni marketer kama wewe ni songwriter wewe ni songwriter Fic, you know just stick to what you know how to do best usijifanye vitu mingi sana otherwise you you'll fail Uh, let me welcome the PS4 culture. Uh, Mr. Joe Robert Okudo. By the way, one thing you don't know about Joe Okudo is that uh, he was very instrumental in the 90s especially in as far as the, a, a change of culture in terms of introducing uh, the new wave of local music and opening up clubs um, at least to allow a local song to play. He was very instrumental. Um, if you remember a club called Choices back in the day, uh, which of course blossomed into something else. Joe Okuda, amongst many others, was very instrumental. So, ladies and gentlemen, to begin my coffee, he's here for the reason he's passionate about this. Joe Okuda, the principal said. Thank you, Jimmy. Um, the late, there was not, it was not in the 90s, because I'm not 46. <laughs> <laughs> he's throwing my age here without my permission. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to be here and see a lot of faces that we've met. Uh, with your permission, allow me to. Uh, bring on stage some people I've been working with very closely to put this day together. I think Prof and your team, please come up. Uh, the reason I've uh, asked these uh, fine ladies and gentlemen to come up here, um, before, for the first time, the government created a department for culture and arts was because there's a desire by the presidency to focus on the creative economy because we understand the creative economy is the next big frontier when it comes to employment and youth creation in this country. Nobody has paid a lot of attention to this uh, uh, industry and there's been a lot of frustration and we're here to kind of solve the, solve the problem. However, there have been some fine, the people I present up here have been doing a lot of work for the last few years uh, to try and get some you know, organization around the industry. And uh, when I did, uh, when I was appointed as a prim uh, prim principal secretary earlier this year, they came into my office and we agreed on a roadmap and we said we are going to not only focus on Nairobi but go around the country, look at what the problems are and come and, and use you guys to give us the solutions in your own eyes on what we can do to help you move this uh, particular sector. Uh, but the next two days we want to sit and listen and not just listen, we want solutions. Um, each one of you is going to get a challenge and by tomorrow morning we'll need some five, six things from the floor. What we must do as a government, we will also tell you what we expect of you. And the end result of this is not only trying to secure more funding for the creative economy and its entire subsectors, but also to create 
projects that can actually make you grow your business. It is a business we're talking about. Our intention is to ensure that moving on from today when this bus starts is that we'll put more money back into your pockets than has ever been seen before since independence. So we're here. So help us, help us make that journey. Help us organize yourselves in the next two days so that we can have comprehensive conversations moving forward and purely on achievements and activities that we need to do. Asante Nisana. Thank you, Bona Pies. Ladies and gentlemen, let me ask Joy Boyer to come and give us a presentation as far as creative economic and performance perspectives for practice. Or well, you know, start with Professor first. Now, the Creative Economy Working Group, of which I chair, believes very strongly that the creative sector should serve two purposes. One, it must give you know, um, artists a livelihood. They need to be able to make money. They need to be able to have something in their pocket and secure their future. Secondly, that it is very important that they express themselves in a manner that people enjoy and that actually they uh, facilitate freedom of expression. And this is very important because creativity is not just about money, about creating wealth. It's also about expressing ourselves as human beings and really being able to um, uh, express the environment in which, in which we live. Now, so what's our current status? There is a recent report that shows that although the sector is thriving, although the sector is growing, there are certain fundamental gaps which we really need to address. The first one is really helping the creative sector uh, develop a business acumen. Yani wajue namna ya kufanya biashara, au sio? Na njia ya kufanya biashara is precisely what uh, Jimmy was saying that you are a creative person but you should you should also know that there are marketers that can support you. Now what's also coming out very very loudly um, is that we don't have enough data about the sector. We don't know enough about the sector. And we believe very strongly that once we know about the sector, once we have information about the sector, who are the players? How much are they making? How can, they, how they can, can the sector be developed even further? What's the role of the private sector? What's the role of government? What's the role of the county government? for that matter. So once we get all these data, it will be very, very easy uh, to, to plan. Now, a couple of issues that we are noticing uh, with regard to film and, uh, and television. We know, we know that there have been efforts, especially in the last few years, to entrench local con uh, content in our media. And I think the sector is very appreciative of this fact, okay? However, there are still challenges. We are not sure that this 40% um, requirement is being enforced by our media houses. And I think that it is important for us to ensure that the media houses actually, you know, follow the rules. And I think that what, what is required is more tracking of the local content that's coming out of our media houses, you know. Um, the definition of local content is very clear in the act but again, we really would like to see more of, of that. There is also a major concern in the industry about screening opportunities. People need spaces, people need platforms to screen their movies, you know. And we're talking about spaces not just at the national level in terms of Nairobi, but also in terms of the counties. Um, what happened to our theaters? They were all converted into churches. Can we restart reclaiming our, that space? Can we start getting um, the, the screens back uh, to where they, where they were? We are also aware of the income tax exemptions. And I think the sector is also aware of these exemptions in terms of um, 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 uh, the fact that, you know, some of our equipment is VAT exempt and so forth and so on. However, um, it still continues to be a big challenge, especially at the level of licensing. There are too many licenses that um, the 
you know, workers, the practitioners in the film, as well as television industry, have to um, purchase. And that process is very, very cumbersome. You know, I think that there is a little efficiency that is required, according to many of us, um, to ensure that um, uh, the, 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 the licenses are harmonized and that actually um, the filmmakers, uh, you know, really get the benefit of the, um, of the legislation. Crafts and design. Now, there's a huge opportunity for crafts and design in our country, you know. But um, uh, what's happening is that we are yet to develop um, a niche for Kenya. We really do require the Kenyan brand in terms of design to come out. We need, um, you know, West Africans have their brand. Ausio, you can see the West African brand, but what is the Kenyan brand? So a sense of harmonizing this Kenyan brand because then it will open up possibilities for us uh, globally. The sector feels very strongly that um, it is disadvantaged when it comes to trade. Um, and um, one, of the, one of the considerations that's coming out is to what extent are rights of designers, rights of those people who work in the big industries, fashion industries, to what extent are they um, uh, respected and so on. Music, Ted, you are right. I mean, you can't write your profession is music. So what is the category? What is the work category for the creative sector? Artists are not able to uh, pay their taxes. They would like to pay their taxes. That's what we hear. They would like to pay their taxes. And they are paying their taxes. But under what category of taxation are they? And I think it is important for the country to be able to recognize art as a profession. And that that way um, you are able to allow it to, to grow. We used to take theater to the social halls in our small townships. What happened? Why can't we have as many spaces in the counties as possible? Why can't we have open, um, open air theater? You know, spaces that are just platforms and communities uh, participate in constructing those platforms and um, we create space for our creative people. So I think there is space for performing arts to grow. Um, there is a very strong concern again from the sector that we, the, 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 um, that maybe we require an arts policy, you know, uh, that would actually then help um, the performing arts uh, to grow. Frankly, it's very difficult to access our books uh, because the books are very, very expensive. I think that there is need to remove the 16% VAT. Um, and with regard to visual arts, it is very, very critical because, again, there are issues of copyright with regard to visual arts. There are issues related to the category of visual arts as a profession, um, as well as community education on visual arts. There are, there are a couple of recommendations coming from the Creative Economy Working Group. One, that we need to nurture talent, that we need to build the market, that we need to do skills development, uh, that we need to do research and data, and we need to build the infrastructure required um, for the sector, we need to increase the number of incentives, uh, tax incentives for the, for the sector and enforce policies and regulations to protect the, center, uh, the, the, the sector. And finally, that we do require fair compensation for the artists, especially when it comes to ringtones. I think there's a very strong feeling that our artists are not getting enough um, from, from the ringtones, as well as other spaces that are occupied by the, by the private sector. So this is, this is what I would like to report from the Creative Economy Working Group. Thank you, guys. It's on. Thanks, Jimmy. Jimmy used to sing in a band called, called Impulse, and they had one excellent Kikuyu number, which actually he should, at some point between today and tomorrow, sing for you. It was, it was, it was called Jukia. Jukia ne ainiruo. We remember that one. It is a large sector. It is a huge sector. It has lots of issues. It has lots of subsectors. And really, one of the problems that I think we find is how do we engage with these issues? How do I, as an artist, how do I, as a musician, how do I, as a graphic designer, how do I, as a dancer, how do I, as a crafter, engage with these issues in a way that gives constructive feedback to policymakers so that policies can be designed 
that are impactful in the right direction for me as an artist and for my subsector and for the industry as a whole. And we need to know these because this is where we lobby and this is where we make our argument. The first phase is finding your voice. All of us at some point recognize that we're actually going to be an artist, not a scientist, not an accountant, not an agriculturalist. We're going to be an artist. We have a particular skill, a particular endowment. This stage is important. How does society recognize that stage? How does your family recognize that stage? How many of us were discouraged when we were drawing, when we were singing, when we were dancing, and we were told that is great to do it as a side thing, as a hobby, but really get serious and get a serious job? That perception, that sense of how we receive and recognize creativity is important at a, at a, at a society level. And at a policy level, it means that we need to really begin to lobby for and think about what is the philosophy that we as a country hold around creativity? How do we perceive creativity? How do we perceive our creative people? So this is something that we need to reflect on. It is part of our journey. The finding voice, the recognition of that talent, and either the nurturing or the obstruction of that particular talent. And then there's another phase, and an important phase. We all reach a turning point of some sort. Some of us burn out. We burn out because the journey has actually been extremely difficult. The environment has not been conducive or friendly to us. We give up. And we can see that. You know, we talk about some of our well-established musicians who have done extremely well, and we say, what happened to Kabaka? Why did he have to disappear that way? Why did he have to die that way? And some, just the creative juices run out. What do we do at that stage? How do we still honor those individuals? Are there spaces where perhaps they can reflect, feed the newer generations, and maybe even re-stimulate their own creative juices and start a whole other cycle? So this journey that we're on, my friends, as artists, is an important journey. This journey is a structured journey. This journey can be analyzed in phases. And as we analyze that journey in phases, we can begin to identify those aspects that we really must be at the vanguard of pushing and lobbying for in order that policy and legislation works for us. This meeting is about us finding solutions for ourselves. We are not a waste of time. We are not disorganized. We are complex. We are valuable. Thank you. Once again, a round of applause for Joe Mboya. Makofi Tafadali. I speak today also about a certain subsector in the Creative Economy Conference, a subsector that gives opportunity to filmmakers, to musicians, to artists, to craftsmen, to models, to actors, to marketers, PR events, brand strategists, designers, TV and radio and digital practitioners. And the subsector I want to speak about is the advertising consultancy. I want to talk about two issues. And the one issue is dominance in the sector. And what does dominance do? Now, we are talking about a multi-billion Kenya shilling industry. In this country, um, as we speak today, this sector is dominated to the tune of 70% by one player. 70%. Now, you can imagine what that does. It means that even if this subsector has a representation body, and for argument's sake, let's call it the Advertisers Practitioners Authority, it means even that practitioner's body is going to be dominated to the tune of 70% by this one player. What does it mean when we go to market? Now, our biggest uh, customers, uh, so to call them, or clients, would be government, the multinationals, and the private sector. Now, you have a player who has over seven agencies under one roof. Or call them 10 or 12 agencies under one roof. You're called to tender. This practitioner 
is going to come in as seven or 10 or 12 agencies, while you as a local player are one agency. Now, what does that do to the principle of procurement of one tender per tenderer? And what are the possibilities that you would end up um, winning against this dominant player? The other thing that comes out of uh, dominance in the industry is something that is really creeping, the subsector, which I would call predatory pricing. Now, a player who is 70% dominant can determine what they want to put up as a prize in a tender. So, for example, Jimmy, if you put out a tender out there as the Ministry of Culture, and an individual decides that they are going to tender at probably 3% uh, the cost anyone else can put out there. It means that they've pushed out everyone else out of the industry. Now, these are the effects of dominance. The second issue uh, coming out of the, this subsector is uh, importing of talent. Uh, we know that, uh, as Joy is saying, we are skilled and very highly skilled. And we are talking about Kenya in 2016. I think it should be a policy, it should be a rule that we should not import any talent that uh, is coming to do a job that can be handled by a Kenyan. Well, no. there, there are three questions you've asked. I'll only take one. The rest of the panel will address one. Uh, this is a question of unfair business practices, uh, uh, especially around tendering. Uh, and this, this is a question that's cutting across most of the subsectors. So if you think about advertising as a, as a subsector, maybe the question is an issue of dominance. If you go to music, uh, unfair business practices are around where the producer, the publisher, the promoter, and, uh, and, the, and the studio is one person uh, who takes all the rights of the musicians uh, as as a part of unfair business practice. When you go to film and television, you find unfair business practices is where uh, TV companies, uh, instead of buying uh, talent, they start to produce uh, their own in-house talent. And the question becomes, are they a buyer or are they a producer? And are they competing with the same people they should be buying from? Um, so the, the question of unfair business practice uh, is a question of uh, maturity in our value chains. Uh, across board and we have to start now to when we start to making uh, recommendations as part of the uh, the thoughts of today and tomorrow to start to alienate very clearly um, if we are talking about uh, an issue of a unfair business practice in the space of uh, importation of talent perhaps uh, do we want to close our markets even as we are trying to go to other markets what is it that we are asking? Uh, the question uh, uh, of, of, of breaking up uh, these big, big uh, tenderers, uh, is it a question of uh, law where we say at least 30% or 40% of all the tenders uh, by law, uh, with San Sakaja trying to push for a certain kind of law like that, uh, is, a, is it a legal approach that we want or is it a, a, a self-regulating industry issue? So do we say that um, the Editors Guild to create uh, their regulations for, for, the, for, the ed, for the publishing sector? Uh, is it the musicians to create an, uh, business practices codes that everyone abides by? So even as we are asking these questions, uh, we also want to think about what the solution is. So there are certain rules and, um, uh, and regulations that can be uh, sector specific. Eh? Um, if we know that that is the problem, then we actually develop the rules and regulations uh, related to the subsector. Um, I also do think that um, there is some space for legislation, especially when we are trying to ensure that the sector can grow and actually compete favorably. Almost some kind of affirmative action. Mm. Uh, to protect the sector. And I think this is, the, this is the path we might want to take. How do we ensure affirmative action for a fairly nascent, uh, nascent industry, you know, so that it's not um, crushed by 
um, international players and so on. I think this is the this is the path that you might want to take and uh, push towards. For instance, here we are all of us here, and then we, we then decide that we want, to, we want to go and tell everybody in the creative economy, let's not import a thing that a Kenyan can do. But we've not fought the implicit bias within us about the quality of things that Kenyans can do. There's some of us in the room who would rather go to somebody from another country to do a thing uh, would rather go to, to somebody of another race to do a thing, simply because we've internalized an idea about how Africans do things, how Kenyans do things, how people from a certain tribe do things. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of different ideas that we have that we're just holding quietly, our own little biases, and we don't really talk about that. Instead of saying, for instance, that I, I as KJ, like for instance, KJ, I would challenge you, I know a fantastic suit maker who's a Kenyan. Can you commit to only having your campaign suits be made by a Kenyan? Like, you know, a good, a really, really good Kenyan, you know? So that you can say, even me, I myself, I am only wearing Kenyan-made things. And this is, a, this is a journey that I myself am taking. I'm trying to weed out of my life the things that Kenyans can do. Why aren't I giving my money to Kenyans as opposed to people from other places? Another thing that came up... Um, and in, in, the, in the views of, 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 of making equal access and equal opportunities is the unfair position that Nairobi has had with regard to being a cultural, like where the culture goes, it's the top of the cultural chain in this country. And so many of, of my artists in, 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 in Machakos all my, and my artists in Meru are saying, what is this thing where you send artists from Nairobi and we're supposed to welcome them with open arms, but where is the channel, the, the platform for them in Nairobi to come and listen and get an audience and be appreciated? So even as we think about some of these things, there's also room to kind of widen our ideas of why we accept what we accept, what ideas that we have of, of what is Kenyan, what is, is, is what is Kenyan in my head, a thing that's only Nairobian. Maybe there's a fantastic suit maker in Machakos and we just don't know him yet. So you know, or her. So there's, there are all these things to think about. And even, and even as I say that, I put the challenge to the people from counties that are not Nairobi, that because of the internet, because of everything, like literally the playing field has shifted and you have an opportunity to shoot up above. There are people in this city, there are people all over the country who will drive to you, even if you're in Nanyuki, even if you're in Turkana, because you make fantastic suits, you deliver on time, you do, nah, nah, you're not going to give me an issue. If you decide that you make clothes only for plus size women like myself, um, you make fantastic ones. Somebody will come and find you where you are because you're so great. You know, there's a dearth of, 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 of good talent, good quality things. And so if you can fill that gap, fill it, fill it with pride. Don't come with little issues for, I'm not from Nairobi, nobody's going to listen to me. Do you know people? Do you know Kenyans? They look for good things. So there's all this to think about. Um, but again, just going back to even for us as ourselves, let's really rethink our ideas of how we consume the things that are Kenyan. And I guess when we are the people who are making decisions at the industry level, if we decide that I'm only going to hire a Kenyan DOP, I'm only going to hire a Kenyan scriptwriter, it's going to be so easy because we've already started making these decisions even in our own lives. Thank you. Thank you very much. We need to take a break.